Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Adjust tax withholding now to pay the proper amount of tax. Adjust tax withholding now. Uh, don't you take that tone of voice with me, IRS. I'll have you know my tax dollars pay for your whole, like, uh, organization over there. Holy crap. Did you just use my tax dollars to give the IRS auditors guns? Uh, okay. I get your not-so-subtle point, IRS. No need to shove the point through my gut. However, I totally already adjusted my tax withholdings. And yes, before you ask, I have also cleaned my room. I mean, why don't you leave me alone and go harass my brother or something if you got nothing better to do? We're all under the IRS's thumb. You are so under the thumb, it's frightening. At least I've got a thumb. Wh which isn't good. It's not good. You look stupid. I'm sorry. Because as you would expect from a bureaucratic institution, they spend a good deal of time with their thumb up their bum. Whoo, Shrek, did you do that? Man, you gotta warn somebody before you just crack one off. My mouth was open and everything. I mean, honestly, if we're not careful, we may end up under their thumb while it's perpetually up their bum. Yeah, right, brimstone. Don't be talking about it's the brimstone. I know what I smell, and there wasn't no brimstone. Didn't come off no stone, neither. And that would be really bad. The IRS having constant indigestion, you know, from eating all those entrepreneurs. IR 2022-186, October 20th, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today urged taxpayers to check their tax withholding while there's time left in 2022 to benefit from any necessary changes. Let's just recap the process here. So for tax year 2022, you might not file the tax return until something like April 15th of 2023. However, if you waited to pay all of your taxes at the point in time you filed by April 15th, 2023, you would most likely be subject to penalties and interest, which is why we have to basically pay during the year. In other words, you can think of the filing of the tax return if it was a perfect world, if we didn't have such a complex tax code as it would be just kind of an information return. In other words, if we had a really easy tax system, which was like a flat tax and it was easy for us to calculate how much tax we owe as we earn our revenue, we would just pay the taxes throughout the year. And then at the end of the year, in a similar way as with like payroll taxes, for example, we would file an information return by April 15th of the following year saying, hey, look, this is how much I earned during the year. I already paid you that amount and there would be no refund and there would be no amount due in a perfect world if we had an easy tax system. However, the income tax is not a flat tax and it's got a whole lot of, of other components related to it, including deductions and credits and whatnot that complicate it greatly. So it's near impossible. It's basically impossible, even with a fairly basic tax return to get the tax withholdings to be perfect uh, throughout the year. So what we have to do then is pay a little bit more and that's why we have a refund. So in other words, we're, we're not shooting for a refund just so we can get some money back at April 15th. We're shooting for a refund so that we avoid the penalties and interest of paying too little during the year. Now the IRS in order to enforce the payments has pressure leverage on the payer of, of the money. So in any business transaction, we've got someone's going to be generating revenue. The other person's going to have an expense. The expense side, the person that's paying is where the IRS has the leverage. So if you're an employee, for example, the person that is paying your employer has an expense a payroll expense and you then are the employee. And if the IRS has the leverage on the employer because they can say, hey, look, if you want a deduction for the payroll taxes you paid, we want you to do X, Y, and Z. And in an employee-employer relationship, that includes basically taking the withholdings so they make the employer into their tax collector, right? But the employer is not totally responsible because you're responsible for telling the employer, 
information in terms of how much you're, they're going to take out of your paycheck on a period by period basis and so that's going to be your responsibility and you can file you can like do a w4 kind of calculation so the employer can do their responsibility which is to withhold some of your money and be the tax collecting agent so we've had a lot of changes in the last couple of years uh, in terms of the economy in general people's job situation as well as the tax code so that means it's going to be a lot more difficult because there's more uncertainty about what's going to happen in the future because it's not as easily predicted in the past so there's a whole lot more people that would probably benefit from updating their withholding calculation looking into what their withholdings are and and trying to get that straight because you can't really just rely on the prior year as you would if it was like a stable environment okay that's the general recap here so an adjustment made now will help people avoid a big surprise such as a big refund or a balance due at tax time in 2023 so obviously what you want to avoid is is a big bill when by april 15th of 2023 and if you have a big bill that probably also means you'll be subject to penalties and interest because the irs is going to say that you didn't pay enough during the year and that's clearly what you want to avoid so life brings constant changes to individual financial situations events events like marriage divorce new tax law a new child or home purchase can all be reasons to adjust withholdings so if we have a if things were stable and we had a major life change and that would be something like marriage or there was a divorce because obviously that could change our our status for tax filing status and can have a significant impact on our taxes so we would want to then adjust our withholdings to account for that and then uh new tax law now this is the one that's kind of relevant to the last few years here the tax law has been changing greatly in an, in an attempt to adapt to the changes in the environment and so on uh so so that in and of itself means that even if your life has been fairly stable over this time frame you you're going to want to possibly adjust your withholdings or look into it again because the law the environment the tax law has changed greatly especially for low to moderate income individuals because they've changed they've changed a lot of the refundable credits for example so if there's a new child uh then then you know there's going to be tax tax consequences or home purchase that's another big item that you want to consider the tax consequences when you're thinking about the home purchase can all be reasons to adjust withholding so tax withholding estimator the tax withholding estimator also available in spanish can help people determine if they have too much income tax withheld and how to make an adjustment to put more cash into their own pocket so in order to do the tax withholdings the tax returns are quite complex to, to do the to do the income tax calculation it's quite complex even if you have a basic return basic returns used to be a little bit easier because if you had a fairly low amount of income then you wouldn't have too many tax brackets you would be dealing with and it's a pretty basic calculation but more and more they're adjusting the low to moderate income side of things with these refundable credits and they have phase outs and whatnot so the low income side of things can actually get you know quite complex these days so you pretty much have to have software to do it to do a good projection because remember if you start a new job or something like that and you start earning money in january for example you can't just pay the flat tax uh rate of how much you earn to the government because you don't know what your highest tax rate your marginal tax rate will be due to the progressive tax system until you've got total income at the end of the year so that's one of the complexities for us trying to pay throughout the year so if you don't have access to tax software this tax withholding estimator is getting more and more to be basically a projection kind of tax software tool and you can use that to to help you to kind of estimate what your withholdings should be and use it then to make any adjustments to like the w4 for example and talk to your employer about it so in other cases it can help taxpayers see that they should withhold more or make an estimated tax payment to avoid a tax bill when they file their tax return next year so if you if you work this tool and you say oh man i owe i'm gonna owe money for sure so i want to pay it now and why would you want to pay it now instead of by april 15th because you want to avoid the penalties and interest so you might want to then make an estimated payment so notice if if you are withholding money because you're a w-2 employee then 
if they under withheld all year and now it's October, you're gonna have to compensate by over withholding in the last few months here in order to, to have the total average out. And hopefully because they're taking it out with withholdings, they won't charge you any penalties and, and interest related to it. But then you're gonna have to, in January, do it again, because in January, then you wanna get your withholdings right so they can have even withholdings throughout the whole year. That's just the easiest thing to do. You could try to mess with the withholdings. You could try to say, well, I'm gonna to try to withhold less in the beginning of the year and more at the end of the year and see if you can kind of game the system if you wanted to in that way. But the easiest thing to do would be, of course, to just have a set withholding throughout the entire year. So if you have to skew the withholdings for the last few quarters, few uh, months here to pay the proper amount, then you're gonna to have to do this again in January to get it right for the entire year starting 2023. So the tool offers workers, retirees, self-employed individuals and other taxpayers, a user-friendly step-by-step tool for effectively tailoring the amount of income tax they should have withheld from wages and pension payments based on their complete set of facts and circumstances. Pay as you go. <clears throat> Hold on a second. I think I swallowed a fly. <clears throat> Any case, taxes are generally paid throughout the year. There's a link to that here, whether from salary withholding, quarterly estimated tax payments, or a combination of both. So most people, if you're a W-2 employee, you're gonna, you're gonna have withholdings. But if you're a sole proprietor, for example, then you're actually gonna have to write a check quarterly to the IRS. It's a really, really painful thing to do. And if you're not used to doing that, then, then and, you, and then you start a new sole proprietor business, you wanna make sure that you take that into consideration because a lot of sole proprietors just get behind on their taxes because they're just not used to, to paying their, their taxes that way because it's always been done through a withholding and they're not used to having to pay the, the self-employment tax uh, as well. So you really wanna, I mean, even a, a business that starts out doing quite well can be really hampered if they don't, if they get behind on that. So take that in consideration. About 70% of taxpayers, however, withhold too much every year. This typically results in a refund. The average refund is 2022 is under $3,000. So the reason 70%, you know, <laughs> put too much in is because you can't get it perfect right that's the point and you're trying to avoid penalties and interest plus the tables that are set up for the withholdings tables when you do the w4 calculations are designed to be a little over payment because again they want the cushion you want the cushion on the overpayment to avoid the penalties and interest if you underpay so a few other factors about refunds taxpayers who do not have to get one so proper withholding adjustments help people boost take home pay rather than be over withheld and get it back as a refund. So in a, in a perfect world, you would generally like to get the money in the paycheck because then you get the money sooner. So from a time value of money standpoint, I wanna get as much money during the paycheck as I can so that I can do whatever I need to do to pay for whatever I need to pay for. And if there's if I have extra money, I can invest it and start earning interest on it. So so you don't want to have a huge refund at the end of the year because then you didn't optimize your withholdings because you could have got paid more during the year. But again, you want a bit of a withholding because there's no possible way that you're going to make it exact. And, and what you don't want to do is get hit with the penalties and in, in, in the interest and an inability to pay at year end. So while most are issued a 21 days or less from an error free and paperless tax return, uh, many take longer for different reasons. Taxpayers are advised not to rely on a refund for big purchases. So when tax season comes around, many people often file their tax return and then they see they're getting a refund and they go on a spending spree before they get the money. You don't really want to count the chickens before they hatch or count your eggs before because they there might be some rotten eggs and the, the chicken be, that hatches be, is like a little evil beast of a bird or something you know anyways i don't know what i'm talking about you just you want to wait till you get the refund typically if you can but obviously there are situations where you got to do what you got to do so taxpayers are advised 
not to rely on a refund so we got the direct deposit is the easiest and most convenient way to get a refund more than 90 percent of all refunds are issued this way paper return processing delays stem uh, stemming from the pandemic for six months or more so the irs is still backed up because they did the whole social distancing thing from the top down and then which was you know so the irs got hit the hardest with these crazy regulations and whatnot well maybe not hit the hardest but you know in general the, the, whatever so they're backed up the irs COVID 19 operations page offers complete details there's a link to that here other items may affect 2022 taxes some unforeseen life events can be a trigger to make withholding adjustments they include coronavirus relief coronavirus tax relief there's a link to that here Tax help for taxpayers, businesses, tax exempt organizations, and others include health plans affected by the coronavirus COVID-19, disasters such as wildfires and hurricanes. There's a link to that here. Special tax law provisions may help taxpayers and businesses recover financially from the impact of a disaster, especially when the federal government declares their location a major disaster area job loss irs publication 4128 tax impact of job loss so clearly people go through jobs like crazy these days it seems like so so it's kind of hard to predict what's going to happen from year to year just in the environment i'm not saying that's anyone's fault that's just the way things seem to be these days so explain how uh, this unfortunate circumstance can create new tax issues uh, workers making uh, moving into gig economy due to the pandemic. So a lot of people, you know, when they might be doing more part time work, might be doing gig work on the side. And so then you got to take into consideration the gig work and the account and the government is, is doing a lot to try to get a handle on the gig work. The gig work is like the new cash based business, like the government doesn't typically like cash based business, like a like a hair salon and the nail salons and and uh, massage parlors because if you get paid cash by the end customer it's hard for the irs to to double check on you whereas if you get paid from a business they can pressure the business to 1099 you at least if not make you an employee so the gig work is going to be <clears throat> the new thing where where they're kind of uh they're kind of trying to trying to strangle hold get a stranglehold on it try to make the platforms possibly hire people as employees rather than uh, rather than contractors, which doesn't really make sense because it's kind of an intermediary platform and that would totally kill the gig work economy. But that's probably what they'll do at some point. So <laughs> make the gig work money while you can. But remember, you got to report it. Some at, you got to report it, and and you're going to have to pay taxes. So do your tax calculations accordingly so for more information about estimated taxes and tax withholding see tax withholding at irs.gov there's a link to that here there'll be a link to this in the description